Welcome! Hepatitis C Treatment and Support In this video, Dr. Nancy Rowe, an expert on liver disease, will discuss hepatitis C treatment and support. She will review how and where to find resources and support, as well as how to talk about your diagnosis with family and friends. So why is talking about hepatitis C to your family and your relatives difficult? Well, first of all, there's a lot of misconceptions around hepatitis C. We do recognize that there are high risk factors such as injection drug use, uh, men who have sex with men, other types of, of risk factors that you might not want to talk to your family about, but a lot of individuals with hepatitis C don't know their risk factor. And so although you want to approach your family in the best way that you can have this conversation with your family, it's also very appropriate to say, I have this infection. I don't know how long I've had it. I'm not sure how I got it, but we need to talk about this so I can help you know if you should be screened and how to get screened or how should we change our relationship or not change our relationship because I know I have this infection. What can I do to my family to prevent them from getting hepatitis C and what kind of things are low risk? This is really important. When you have an infection, especially if you might be ill from your infection, you have liver disease, you have cirrhosis, you don't feel good. You need to have your family around you supporting you, but you don't want them to be scared and you don't wanna be nervous that you're gonna make them infected. Everyday household contact, hugging, kissing, using the same toilet, drinking out of the same cup, using the same fork and knife. This is not going to give someone hepatitis C. You do want to be careful, though, with anything that could have your blood on it. Don't share your toothbrush. Don't share a razor. Don't share nail equipment where you might have microscopic pieces of blood. Um, that might still be low risk, but could expose them to the virus. And you want to decrease any chance of exposing your family around you. If you cut yourself, make sure you cut, you cover that up with a Band-Aid until you're not losing blood. If there's blood on the counter, clean that up with a bleach solution, not pure bleach, something that's going to um, help kill that virus. But don't be nervous that you have to isolate yourself from your family. You need your support network. Now, your family might be scared. It's important that that they can get resources that can help communicate these messages to them. The American Liver Foundation, the CDC, they all have places that can help your family read uh, in a very, you know, in a way that supports what you're telling them, that they don't have to isolate themselves from you, that the chance of getting virus from you is really, really small. And to help them um, be able to navigate that, that relationship safely so that they can be there and uh, you know, support you and not be scared that they're going to get infected. Still, screening is really important. And because the CDC really endorses very broad-based screening, even if you did not have hepatitis C, the vast majority of your family should still be screened for hepatitis. Um, screening is recommended, which is a blood test for everyone between the age of seven, um, 18 and 79. And so even if you did not have the infection, the people close to you should still be talking to their clinicians about having a screening test to make sure that they do not have hepatitis C. If you have hepatitis C and they screen negative, unless they are worried that they got exposed um, by getting you know, a needle stick or something that had your blood on it, they do not need to serially be screened. We do not tell family members that every year or every six months, they should be screened for hepatitis C because again, the risk of getting infected from living with someone with hepatitis C is very, very small. It's really important that you talk to your family about how hepatitis C is transmitted. It is a percutaneous exposure, which is the fancy way of saying you get exposed to someone's blood or body products 
through either an injection, going through your skin, or through um, sometimes sexual intercourse. We absolutely recognize that sexual intercourse can place a person at risk for hepatitis C, especially if it's associated with chemsex, or if it's a man having sex with another man, or if there's an infection or you know disruption, um, you know open skin in that area. But we recognize that long-term monogamous couples have a very low risk for the other person to get hepatitis C, which really means that hepatitis C and sexual intercourse is a very low risk activity. Although you still want to make sure that you're um, letting your partners know that you have hepatitis and doing your best to not only prevent hepatitis C exposure, but all um, other STIs. So another important question is how do you talk to your family about how you got acquired the virus? This is going to be a very personal journey. Some individuals feel comfortable talking to their family about injection drug use or high-risk behaviors, and other individuals don't. You do not have to feel pressured in having a conversation you're not ready to. So it's easy enough to talk about hepatitis C and the importance of getting them screened and say that you're not exactly sure how you acquired the virus. That's a legitimate answer. And if you want to talk about how you acquired the virus, because it's important, let's say you um, injected drugs when you were younger and you had children after that time point, um, you need to talk to them about the fact that they should be screened because they might have been exposed at a time when you um, had the infection but didn't know you were infected. And so this is a very personal journey and you want to make sure that you are prepared, that you have some great resources to help guide your family towards if that if the conversation um, goes so that they want to read something or learn something about it, but they they you know need some time to reflect on what you've told them yourself. And you want to make sure that that you are, are not um, being made to feel guilty. Lots of people have a acquired hepatitis C, they really don't know how they have acquired the infection. And we never want to make someone feel that they, they, they did something that they shouldn't have done because hepatitis C can be acquired in a lot of, you know, kind of silent ways. And you may not know how you got infected. And it's important that you don't have to figure that out. We can cure the virus irrespective of how long you've had it. The important thing is that you are identified and linked to someone who can help you acquire that cure. The next thing I'd like to cover is some misconceptions. Um, it's important to recognize that, that there are very well established ways of being exposed to hepatitis C. But it's also important to know that transmission can be silent. So that if you have hepatitis C, and you don't have any symptoms, it doesn't mean that you can't spread the virus. Um, it also means if you don't have any symptoms, you could still be getting liver damage. So just because you feel good, if you know that you might have acquired hepatitis C, you wanna make sure that you're still screened and um, considered for treatment. You also wanna make sure that you don't um, you know, miss the opportunity to help your family recognize that they could have been exposed just because you feel well. Another important thing is to know that alcohol does not cause hepatitis C. This is an infection that you get exposed to, but drinking alcohol can increase the chance of getting liver damage. So you wanna make sure that you are um, concentrating on a healthy lifestyle, but drinking does not cause hepatitis C. It's also important to know that you cannot get hepatitis C through a mosquito bite. So there are infections that can absolutely be spread through bug bites, but the risk of getting hepatitis C is not felt to be one of them. Another important thing is that hepatitis C is not acquired through medications. Now, injection drug use, because of the risk of, of getting the virus through um, being exposed to someone's blood, can cause hepatitis C, but a medication um, cannot cause hepatitis C. It is also important to know that intranasal in, um, use can also increase the risk of being exposed to hepatitis C. Your nose is a nice, um, you know, bear, uh, a nice place where there's lots of blood vessels. And the reason that inject, um, inhaled drugs are felt in your system is because they quickly enter the bloodstream. And because of that, you can also acquire infections that are in blood through inhaled drugs. One other question that we often hear is if you've been treated for hepatitis C, can you ever get it again? 
So absolutely, um, hepatitis C can be acquired if you are exposed and it can also be cured again. So you shouldn't feel that um, you don't want to go and talk to your doctor if you think you might have gotten re-exposed um, because we can still screen you, we can still find the virus and we can still cure it even if it's a new infection after being cured once before. Another important thing to talk to your family about is caregiver burnout. Um, lots of times our families can get overwhelmed. They're juggling a lot of things. And especially if you're not feeling well, you really need to have them support you. But if they're feeling stressed from this process, or if you're feeling stressed from this process, you want to talk to your provider. There are some ways of getting some assistance. Sometimes your insurance might help with transportation or even offer assistance with household chores. There are also other altruistic ways of getting some help with some of these things. Remember, if you're a part of a church or a community, your community is, is intended to help you, just like you would help them if you had the ability to. So you want to make sure that you're honest about your your feelings, you're honest about the app, the things that are being asked of by your family, um, both from them and for you, and uh, you know, get help when you need that. Um, the last thing you want to do is to find that everyone is stressed and you can't proactively address this. It's really important to have these conversations early when you can still um, help to find the resources and the ability to, to have your family pull together um, at a time where they, you can make changes um, before everyone you know, is, is really kind of struggling. One of the last things I'll address are just resources for caregivers. Um, this is a great video. Of course, I am not going to be able to answer all your questions. So for caregivers, you can direct them to the Caregiver Action Network at www.caregiveraction.org. The Well Spouse Association is another great resource, www.wellspouse.org. And then caregiver.com um, is another great resource. Also, like this video, the American Liver Foundation offers a lot of great educational resources, and you can find those through their resource library. Thank you for watching. If you would like to learn more about hepatitis C, visit the Resource Center on the American Liver Foundation's website for additional videos and materials.